<coughs> Welcome everyone to the Futures Lecture Series, this edition of the Futures Lecture Series. Uh, my name is Andreas Röpstorff and I have the privilege of opening the discussion and introducing Rossi today. Um, the Futures Lecture Series is an initiative by the Institute of Culture and Society and the idea is to bring what we believe are the most interesting speakers, the most interesting thinkers in the world to Aarhus to help us try to understand what kind of world are we living in and what kind of tools and concepts do we need to struggle with in order to try to grasp it and to project us ourselves into not just a future but into multiple futures. And we have long had Rosi Braidotti on our list as one of the people that we really, really hoped to be able to come here. So Rosi is a distinguished university professor at Utrecht University in the Netherlands. Uh, she was born in Italy, grew up in Australia, and her academic life started in France where she did her PhD, and then she was in the US for a number of years before, in a way, returning to Europe. So you could say she really embodies a kind of nomadic subjectivity, which is also a theme of her own thinking, of someone who moves between <coughs> borders, between countries, between disciplines, between areas, and learns something in that very process of belonging and not belonging, and very fittingly now being at Utrecht, one of the oldest universities in Europe. Um, I think what's really amazing in the kind of work that Rossi is doing is that she opens up the questions about the human and the post-human in ways that, so to say, describes the kind of world that we live in. I first met Roddy, Rossi when we were both in a European research project called Attacked, a topological approach to cultural dynamics. It was a very cryptic title and we had no idea what it meant before Rossi came on stage and one of our seminars and gave kind of a very sweeping account of the kind of world we were in and the kind of tools we needed to grasp it and why topology at that time was the way to you look at it. And what I noticed at that time is that what's so characteristic of her style of working and of thinking is on one hand an enormous openness and curiosity to the world, to all the complexities that are in the world, an ability to bring in material from the sciences, from politics, from the arts, from all sorts of fields, in kind of an inquisitive and detailed mapping and cartography of what goes on out there, which is combined in a very unusual way with also trying to grasp, well, what kind of concepts, what kind of ideas, what kind of philosophies do we need in order to understand that particular world that she is busy in trying to cartograph and to map out. And the human, in a sense, becomes a critical point here. First of all, she has been one of the proponents and one of the people that have thought deeply about what it is like to be post-human. And, and in interesting the way, the argument seems to be that, on one hand, you can say it's humanity and the human is all over the place now. We live in the Anthropocene. The traces of our lives can be seen in the geological record and affects the biology that we used to think ourselves in contrast to. But in that very process of, so to say, projecting the human out everywhere, at the same time, the human, in a sense, dissolves itself. At least that classical understanding of the human as being a basically rational agent entity, often a white man, that was the, so to say, tipping point or falling back point of what the human might mean. So in a very interesting way, at the same time as the human is everywhere, it seems to be nowhere, and that might be that particular post-human condition that she is looking into and trying to get words to help us understand. It's also very fitting that she is in the future lecture, Futures Lecture Series because she has come up with some extremely beautiful formulations about what it is like to look into futures. So in the post-human, she says that the future is the virtual unfolding of the affirmative aspect of the present, which honors our obligation to the generations to come. Now, I've read this sentence a number of times. I'm not quite sure that I understand the details of it, but you can say the kind of horizon that it opens up is a horizons of pluralities and the horizons of weenest, of obligations, that's not just tied to a single individual, but really trying to get a grasp of what is it like to be a we and to think of we's and to construct we's in the situation we are in. <coughs> I think what she is demonstrating again and again in her work is that the moment you begin to look at the world in this particular way, then it really has deep implications for how we think about studying our world and how we think about organizing the knowledge communities that we are embedded in. 
You can say the moment you shift from seeing a universe into seeing a so multiverse, we'll, first, then. well then the university becomes also a multiversity. It becomes an institution which is structured in a very different way from the kind of silos that integrates into silos that integrates into university, which for many years has been the European model of what it is like. But what she argues, I think quite affirmatively, and I'm sure you will hear this later, is that inside of this new idea of an institution or whatever it is, the multiversity, well, in here there is a place for humanities, but it's not a matter of being the soft or the dry sciences, as it's often called as opposition to the hard and wet sciences on the other side. These are very interesting metaphors that you find out there. No, she says, what seems to characterize what you might see as the humanities is that it is the subtle sciences, that there is something about the subtleness, the attention to detail and the ability to unfold subtle narratives with strong theories that seems to be at the core of what we need to do in order to understand our world. She ends her book on the post-human to say that we find ourselves in a new situation. It's the imminent here and now of a post-human planet. It is one of the possible worlds we have made for ourselves, and insofar as it is the result of our joint efforts and collective imaginings, it is quite simply the best of all possible post-human worlds. And with these words, please help me to welcome Rosie Braidotti at stage for her first public speech at Aarhus Multiversity. <laughs> Thank you. It's so kind. Thank you. Thank you.